Question number 24. A particle was moving along a straight line. The acceleration of the particle after t seconds was given by 40 minus 13 meters per second squared. The initial velocity of the particle was 18 meters per second. Part A. Determine the value of t when the particle is momentarily at rest. 5 marks. Then the second question is here. Find the distance covered by the particle between the time t is equals to 1 second and t is equals to 3 seconds. So let's go to the first part of the question. Now we start by highlighting the things that you're given here. We are given the initial velocity of the particle. Then you're given acceleration. Now before we start uh, solving this question, there's something that you need to know. Uh, when you move from displacement then to velocity then to acceleration so when you're moving upwards we do integrate that is if you are given acceleration and you're finding a velocity upward movement we integrate then the downward movement we differentiate if we're moving downwards from s all the way to a we differentiate this is very important now in this question we're given this expression for acceleration which is uh, 4 t minus 13 and we're given the initial velocity so i want you to look at the direction you're moving we're moving from acceleration to velocity <clears throat> so in that case we're going to integrate if you're moving upward you're going to integrate so to get uh, velocity we integrate acceleration with respect to t that will give velocity so when you integrate this expression for acceleration we will get velocity so that is what you're going to do so we're going simply to integrate uh, this expression for acceleration which is uh, 40 minus 13 with respect to t so when you integrate 40 minus 13 with respect to t, this will give an expression for velocity. So let's get velocity. So therefore, velocity will be given by. So when we integrate this, will give 40 squared divided by 2 minus 13 t plus a constant. So that is what you get when you integrate. Uh, simplifying this, we'll get velocity is equals to 2t squared minus 13 plus c now there's something else that is going to help us here the initial velocity of the particle is 18 so the initial velocity is 18 so what do we know at the initial velocity at initial velocity time is, is equals to zero seconds at initial velocity time will be equal to zero seconds then velocity at that point will be 18 so what you're going to do you're going to substitute these uh, values v is equals to 18 in this expression for velocity so when v is equals to 18 and t is equals to zero we will get c as 18 i repeat so in this expression v is equals to t uh, 2t squared minus 13 plus c if we substitute v is equals to 18 and t is equals to 0 seconds, we're going to get the value of this constant to be 18. Therefore, the expression for velocity will be v is equals to t squared minus, uh, this one is 13t, I forgot to put that, so minus 13t plus 18. So this is the expression for velocity. Now after getting the expression for velocity, we are supposed to determine the value of t when the particle is momentarily at rest. So what do we know when the particle is momentarily at rest? At rest, when this particle is momentarily at rest, uh, velocity will be zero. At rest, this uh, velocity of this particle will be zero. So what you need to do here is to simply a substitute v is zero so we'll have 2t squared minus 13t plus 18 is equals to zero now you notice that this one is a quadratic equation so we can use any suitable method so this to get the value of t <coughs> so 
uh, I'll use a factorization. I'll look for two numbers whose product is 2 times 18, which is 36. And um, the sum will be given by negative 13. So these two numbers are negative 9 and negative 4. When you multiply them, you get 36. When you add them, you get uh, negative 13. So this one will give me use uh, the space here so get a uh, 2t squared minus 4t uh, minus 9t plus 18 is equals to 0 so factoring out 2t is common get 2 this is a uh, t minus 2 then 9 is common t minus 2 is equals to 0. So this will give 2t minus 9 then t minus 2 is equals to 0. So here we shall have 2t minus 9 is equals to 0 and uh, when you solve this you get t will be 4 and a half or t minus 2 is equals to 0 and this is the case you get t is equals to 2. So there are two values of t when the particle is momentarily at rest. That is, uh, this one, t is equals to four and a half seconds and t is equals to two seconds. So that is how you're supposed to solve the first part of the question. Let's go to the second part of the question. Now the second part of the question is supposed to find the distance covered by the particle between the time t is equals to one second and t is equals to three seconds. Now the best approach to this question is to find the distance covered by the particle between t is equals to 1, that is uh, between 1 and 2, 1 and 2 seconds, then from there we get the distance moved from 2 to 3 seconds. So we're going to do this one in two parts. So find the distance moved by the particle between 1 and 2 seconds, then from 2 to 3 seconds. Now to get that we need to get the expression for the distance or the displacement. Do you have that? Uh, we don't have that but from the initial uh, question here having the expression for velocity is what we're going to use. Expression for velocity was uh, 2 was uh, 2t squared minus 13t plus 18. Having these, uh, we'll be able to get the expression for the displacement. Remember these, what we've just written there. Displacement of distance is S, is uh, space in terms of S, then velocity acceleration. So if we want to get the expression for distance, given the expression for velocity, we are moving upwards. So we are going to integrate we are going to integrate. So when you integrate the expression for velocity with respect to t, we will get uh, distance. We'll get distance or the displacement. So to get the expression for distance, we're going to integrate these. And therefore, to get the distance moved by the particle between 1 and 3 seconds, we're going to start from 1 to 2 seconds. So we integrate from 1 to 2 seconds first, then this expression for velocity in order to get the distance. So 2t squared minus 13t plus 18. And this one is with respect to t. So we're going to begin with this. So first, the distance covered or moved between t is equals to 1 and t is equals to 2. So integrating these, this is what you get. We shall get uh, 2 over 3 t cubed minus 13 t squared divided by 2 plus 18 t plus constant. Then it is between 1 and 1 and 2. So we are going to begin by Substituting 2, t is equals to 2, 
so we substitute the t is equals to 2 so we shall have 2 over 3 and then this one will be cube minus 13 2 squared divided by 2 plus 18 2 uh, we're going to ignore c because once we subtract c will automatically be eliminated so subtract we substitute one now two over three this is a one cubed minus 13 one squared divided by two plus 18 one like that so these are you going to get so we shall get um for this one you shall get this will be eight this will be sixteen over three sixteen over three and this one will be thirteen squared will be twenty six plus thirty six then subtract will be two over three minus 13 over 2 plus 18 like that so when you work out this 16 over 3 minus 26 plus 36 we'll get 15 and 1 over 3 then subtract 2 over 3 minus 13 over 2 this is this is going to give 12 and 1 over 6 12 and 1 over 6 so subtracting 15 1 over 3 minus 12 1 over 6 uh, this one will give uh, 3 and 1 over 6 3 and 1 over 6 so we're going to hold that so what you've got is the distance moved between 1 to 2 seconds now let us go to now the distance moved from 2 to 3 seconds 2 to 3 seconds so I'm going to use this side Two to three seconds so the grid from two to three seconds and this is the same expression for velocity this is a 2t squared minus 13 this is minus 13 t plus 18 with respect to t so this one we shall have 2 over 3 t cubed you've got these plus 18 plus c square brackets 2 to 3 so we're going to begin by uh, replacing 3 substituting 3 so we shall have 2 over 3, then 3 cubed minus 13 over 2, 3 squared plus 18. This will give 18t. Forgot to put 18t there. So 18, 3, like that. Don't need to put c because c will be eliminated. Then I substitute 2. 2 over 3, 2 cubed minus 13 over 2, 2 squared plus 18, 2, and this will be 18. Then this one will be 117 divided by 2 plus 54, then subtract. Two thirds multiply by two. And I think this this one this one we got we we got this. I don't know this one. Let me see. B sixteen over three. We've got this. This is minus twenty six plus thirty six. So working out these eighteen subtract one seventeen over two will be. 13, 26, so to be 27 over 2, or 13.5, then 16 over 3, 
think we got these 16 over 3 we got this one is uh, 15 and 1 third 15 and 1 third so when you subtract these so you get negative 1 and 5 over over 6 now this is now the distance moved between 2 to 3 seconds so now the total distance now total distance total distance go back to where we are now so total distance The one that we got uh, from 1 to 2 seconds, we got 3 and 1 over 6. Then from 2 to 3 seconds, we've got negative 1 and 5 over 6. Now, there's something here you need to know. Uh, why have we got uh, this negative? Uh, do we have negative distance? No, we don't have the negative distance. Now, the reason is because if maybe you sketch this curve, if you draw this uh, as a curve, you would realize that this one will look something like this it is simply means the area is under the the curve let's assume that this is one this is two and this is three so the reason why we have this negative one five over six this is the area that is under the x-axis probably the area under the x-axis that is why it is negative so what you do you take the absolute uh, value by ignoring the negative sign so we are going to have one and five over six so i've explained that because it is negative because the area is probably under the x-axis that is why it is negative but you don't have negative distance so we're not going to take negative one five over six we're going to take the positive value one and five over six so we're going to add here one and five over 6. So when you add now the total distance 3 1 over 6 plus 1 5 over 6 you find this one as 5. This one will give 5 as and this one is uh, in meters because this one is the distance. So that is how you're supposed to solve that question.